Everybody started looking around for an explanation. They started looking for the usual suspects, you know, let's find the, the dirty, the poor, uh, you know, maybe some bad dairy, the lady on the beach who sells shellfish, it's got to be one of them. Experts are called in to investigate. They know typhoid fever is caused by contaminated food or drink. They suspect the plumbing in the house and put dye in the toilet to see if it contaminates the drinking water. It doesn't. They check the local shellfish to see if the bay is polluted with sewage. It isn't. They examine the milk supply in case it is contaminated. It, too, is free of bacteria. The source of the outbreak remains a mystery. Though the Oyster Bay victims recover, a cloud of disease hangs over the house. The family who owned the house, the Thompsons, were afraid if they didn't get to the bottom of this, they would never be able to rent their house again. That winter, the Thompsons learn about a freelance civil engineer known for his ability to track down the source of disease. 37-year-old George Soper is confident and ambitious. By 1907, I had a, a great deal of experience with typhoid fever. As an undergraduate, I had the temerity to move typhoid patients and their families out of a house that had a long history of communicable diseases and, with the consent of the owner, burn it to the ground. George Soper was somebody who got his teeth into a problem and would not let go. He wanted to find the cause. He was not going to give up until he did. And so he was obsessed. Soper begins by reviewing the results of the earlier investigation. It's detective work. And Soper was excited about the ability now to trace diseases, to trace the disease outbreaks, and to really understand how diseases like typhoid were being spread. The first investigators had done their work thoroughly. Try as I would, I could not find anything wrong. So I turned my attention to the people in the house. This gave the key to the situation. Finally, he asked the question of one of the members of the household, who else was in this house that I didn't yet talk to? And one of them remembered that they'd had a cook that summer that was no longer with the family. Knowing it takes up to three weeks after exposure to become sick with the disease, Soper uncovers his first clue. I found that the family had changed cooks on August 4th, about three weeks before the epidemic broke out. All the patients were infected after the new cook's arrival. The way that a cook who was infected with the typhoid bacillus would transmit the disease is that there would probably be some typhoid bacillus that they got onto their hands while they were in the bathroom. To prevent the transmission of typhoid, a lot of brushing and scrubbing was involved, meaning under the nails, no jewelry. I mean, we're talking a vigorous and abrasive scrubbing. Soper also knows the bacteria can survive on uncooked food only. On a certain Sunday, there was a dessert which she prepared and of which everybody present was extremely fond. This was ice cream with fresh peaches cut up in it. I suppose no better way could be found for a cook to clean her hands of microbes and infect a family. The cook is a 37-year-old Irish immigrant who works for wealthy families in New York. Before God and in the eyes of decent men, my name is Mary Mallon, and I have lived a decent and upright life. 